Hi friends, welcome back to this week's What's For Dinner. If you are new here, I would love if you would hit that subscribe button and join my YouTube family. And don't forget to leave a like or a comment down below because it really does help my channel. Uh, this week I have six meals that I show you that we ate throughout the week. Um, one day we just had to do leftovers because when I make casseroles, we're either left with leftovers or have to like half the recipe. Um, but I'm going to tell you my favorite recipe of this week is going to be a salmon that I made with a creamy parmesan sauce. Now that creamy parmesan sauce was literally everything like chef's kiss so so good. Um, but if you don't like salmon, I know a lot of people don't eat seafood. This would be just an like amazing of a sauce over like a ni nice herb crusted chicken. Um, it would be it was just like top level tier. I could drink this sauce by the spoonfuls. It was so good. It felt like I was eating a meal that was like made at a really nice restaurant but of course you know at like lower cost prices and better portions um but uh yeah check that out if you're interested in that and let's just get started this night we were doing a date night in that was going to be like a pot sticker dumpling type night so i got some of these bibigo mandu pork and vegetable dumplings um some chicken and pork pot stickers these are just the albertson's brand and then some of the bibigo uh, pork and ginger soup dumplings and the Korean uh, style steamed chicken and vegetable dumplings as well. Now I won't really focus on cooking these too much just because they're all different and different like directions on all of them. Um, but you know I just like to fry them up. These like gyoza typically is crispy but pot stickers are typically softer but I do like to have a little bit of a crisp on them no matter what if they're meant to be softer or not so that's just me doing that in my new um Greek cho pans and here they are done i just cover those a little bit of black sesame seeds some green onion and some pickled radishes um those pickled radishes were really really good they're from h mart if you ever see those they're very crunchy and tasty these were all really really delicious but my favorite of them all was the mandu dumpling On this night, I just did breakfast for dinner. We had some scrambled eggs with some fresh um, tomatoes in them, a ham steak, some toast. Uh, I was making this video. It actually came out a couple days ago on a Friday. Um, I will leave a link to that in the description box down below as well as uh, try to pop, have a little pop-up here. If you haven't checked that out already, I did a giveaway in that with the Greed Show to give away one of their pans to one of you. So if you haven't seen that already and you want to enter that, go check out that video. I also made this cinnamon roll cake. It was so delicious and I made it using that pan with their cake insert as well. For this recipe, you're going to need 19 ounces of enchilada sauce. I'm using this Las Palmas enchilada sauce. This is the mild red sauce. And you're going to pour that into your blender. Um, I had to measure mine out because it was a bigger can. And you're also going to take an 8 ounce block of cream cheese. And I'm going to just blend those together. And we're going to pour half of that sauce into the bottom of this baking dish. And just go ahead and set that aside when we work on the filling for this. So um, it calls for a one and a half cups of chopped chicken. I'm taking a rotisserie chicken and I just shredded up the chicken. Place that into a nice sized mixing bowl so we can put all our ingredients. I put one drained and rinsed can of black beans. Um, it calls for green bell pepper. Um, I didn't add that, but I did add in a four ounce can of diced green chilies and a couple cloves worth of minced garlic. Then it calls for half a cup of, of chopped scallions. I didn't quite have a half a cup. It's just whatever I keep on my windowsill. So I put that in there. It doesn't call for corn, but I went ahead and added half a cup of corn. And then two cups of um, Mexican blend cheese to this. And I'm just mixing that all together. Now it calls for taco seasoning one packet. I completely forgot at this point and didn't add it in. Now I got a little bit in later on in this casserole. Now the recipe I have linked for you is actually going to be roll-ups version of this, but I decided to just do it like straight lasagna style. Um, it was just going to be quicker and easier on me. So if you're doing it my way, you're going to only need nine lasagna noodles cooked up. Um, their version is one pound of lasagna, which is the whole box. And um, I put three down into that sauce and there was a lot of sauce down there. Now this could be because of the fact that they're doing roll-ups. Um, so I kind of put that some of that onto the top layer of noodles. I put the filling, my layer of noodles, I repeated that, and then the last layer is just noodles, and then you pour your remaining sauce on top of that, and you're gonna cover it with, it says half a cup of cheese. I probably did a little bit more, 
I just made it look like the way I would want the top of a lasagna to look but I didn't add it on yet I did cook this first in the oven at 350 degrees for 30 minutes then like maybe 10 minutes before that I added the cheese on just so it could melt um, I kept this simple I served a Caesar salad which really complemented this because um, it was a little bit on the spicy side but uh, I the creaminess of that salad really did help that now when I was cooking this uh, as when I realized I didn't have the taco seasoning so I kind of lifted the top layer of the like the top layer of noodle and I just sprinkled taco seasoning into that top layer of mixture just to give the flavor now it wasn't quite a full packets worth but at least it added some of that flavor which I really don't think it needed in the end because um, this was actually a little bit on the spicy side but we're not huge fans of red sauce um, I still really enjoyed this my boyfriend not as much because he really doesn't care for red sauce that much I kind of would like to give this a try later on with like maybe green sauce To my large skillet over medium high heat, I'm adding some avocado oil. You definitely don't need this much. I was talking to my boyfriend at the same time and just over boring. Um, once that was hot, I went ahead and added my salmon fillets in there, skin side down, um, because these ones have skin on them, which I will be removing. It's just what I had already. Now to season those, I used the blend and the buttery steakhouse from Kinder's on that. Um, I cooked them five to six minutes on that first side and then I flipped them over and I cooked an additional like probably good six seven minutes and as you can see once you cook that skin it just peels right off I did knock a chunk of the salmon off as you see there and I'm seasoning that um, side that didn't get like fried with a little bit more of the blend and I'm flipping that back over and letting that cook for just a couple minutes to get nice and golden brown as well and add a little bit more flavor now for this amazing sauce, I'm taking five tablespoons of butter, letting that melt. I had chopped up some shallot and I'm adding that in there. The recipe that I'll have linked does not include shallot, but I had some and it sounded amazing. Now as you can see, my heat is just way too hot here. I would want this over medium heat at this point and I still had it medium high from the salmon. Um, so I, I pulled that off that burner, let that come back down in temperature and then I set it back. Um, and I'm adding in a quarter cup of minced garlic. Now when I saw that I was like, uh, whoa, a quarter cup? Hey, it was worth it. Good thing I had a lot of cloves of like, they were just bagged garlic, but I had them, I minced them up with my little chopper there, electric chopper, added those in and we're letting those cook for about four or five minutes. Next I'm adding in one ounce of cream cheese, a half a cup of heavy cream with one quarter, quarter cup of whole milk. And I'm whisking that all together or just stirring that all together here just to get that combined and then I'm gonna sprinkle in two tablespoons of flour and whisk that all in there and I'm gonna let that all that cheese cream cheese melt in there and then we'll let this flour cook a couple minutes here then I'll add in um, salt and pepper now the recipe calls for a teaspoon of salt and a teaspoon of pepper I cut that back to a half a teaspoon of each and then I added in one teaspoon of paprika and then I did use the smoked paprika I think that that makes a big difference I was whisking that together and saw that it's a little too thick so I did reserve some of my pasta water because I'm gonna serve this over pasta in total I used a half a cup of pasta water that's also been salted so that's also gonna add some of that salt to that for me and then I added in a quarter cup of grated Parmesan cheese was stirring that and still felt like a little too thick so I added some more heavy cream and this is just going to be to preference um, how th ever thick you like that now you want like your typical sauce consistency so for me that would mean adding more heavy cream or milk um, maybe even a little more pasta water if that's what you want that's still going to help it bind together I cut up some lemon wedges and some fresh dill to go over this now um, this was absolutely amazing I also served it with some um, air fried asparagus this was so so good you guys like this was restaurant like nice restaurant quality and that sauce was literally everything we were both raving over this saying how amazing it was I kept it super simple this night we just picked up some deli fried chicken from Albertsons I served this with one of those Asian salad kits and some of the Stouffer's mac and cheese that I just been craving again I forgot how much I love that stuff but this is a quick easy and delicious meal Um, for this, we're starting off with the rice aroni. I am going to just show myself making it because it's a big part of this main dish here. Um, so to a pan, I added a couple tablespoons of butter. I'm letting that melt and 
in. I'm adding in that rice aroni, and I'm stirring this all together, getting that rice aroni nice and coated, and we're going to let that get nice and golden brown. Now, I did stir this frequently just to make sure I was getting all or as much sides of those um, bits of pasta and rice nice and browned. And then once it is, I'm adding in the seasoning packet to that. I sprinkle that all across, and I'm adding in the water to that. I believe it was two and a half cups worth. And just stir that all together to get your seasoning nice and dissolved and everything very combined. And we'll make sure that's still reaching a boil. I place a lid on top of that and I let that simmer for 15 to 20 minutes. Now, I had this on a little bit higher of a heat, so it did only take 15 minutes for me. I let that rest for about five minutes and added in one can of cream of chicken soup and then a half a cup of sour cream and one cup of ricotta now this recipe that I'll have linked calls for cottage cheese I didn't have any I had ricotta I needed to use up so that's what I did instead um, I don't really think it'd make much of a big difference um, and then it calls for some shredded chicken four cups of chopped chicken I just shredded up some chicken that I made in the instant pot really quick I made two just chicken breasts in there and I shredded that up and add that in and just mix it all together it's a little bit of work here got to get your arm in there but um, just stir that all together till it's all combined I'm spraying the bottom of a 9 by 13 baking dish and I'm gonna go ahead and pour that whole mixture right into the bottom of that baking dish and just spread that all into a nice even layer Next, it calls for a quarter cup of grated Parmesan cheese on top. Now, I use probably closer to a third cup of cheese on that. And next time, I might even add a little bit more. I would like a little bit more of a crispy layer of cheese on top. And then it calls for three ounces of French fried onions. I have a six ounce package here. So I'm just kind of like pulling out half of that or as much as I think is half. And then I'm breaking up some of those bigger pieces and also pulling out that peeling that was left in there from the onion. And we're going to bake that uncovered at 350 degrees for 30 minutes. Um, as you can see, I looked at it like at 27 minutes and the french fried onions were looking a little bit burnt. So I did just decide to just pull that out. And I served this with some green beans. And for those, I just put a can of green beans with a couple tablespoons of butter and some of the Kinder's, the blend seasoning. And I serve that with a spring mix salad with some chopped beets on top and ranch. Now, this was so, so delicious. We really enjoyed this casserole. Um, I'm not typically a fan of your throw together like softer casseroles like that. But this was really good and it made amazing leftovers. Thank y'all so much for watching. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button and that little bell so you don't miss out on any future videos. And I hope you all have a great day.